In today's video, I'm going to continue with the War Stories series. In this one, we're going to take a look at a hero from World War I that never got the full recognition that he deserved. He was awarded the Victoria Cross, yet according to those who knew him, his incredible battlefield exploits should have won him the medal three times over. The man I'm talking about was known as Albert Jacker, an Australian born in Layard, Victoria in 1893. He was the fourth of seven children born to a timber worker and his English-born wife. On September 8th, 1914, shortly after the outbreak of the Great War, he enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force and on November 10th was posted to 14th Battalion as an acting Lance Corporal. Two months of training followed in the Middle East and then he was off into battle. 100 years ago today, a brief announcement was made in the London Gazette, the government's official journal of record. It stated that George V had awarded Lance Corporal Albert Jacker the Victoria Cross, Britain and the Commonwealth's most prestigious award for gallantry in the face of the enemy. The citation read, For most conspicuous bravery on the night of the 19th and 20th of May 1915 at Courtney's Post, Gallipoli Peninsula. Three short sentences followed detailing Jacker's actions in the heart of battle against the Turks. Yet neither this citation, nor two more that followed for his subsequent military crosses, remotely did justice to a man who deserves to be heralded as the most courageous frontline soldier of the entire First World War. On April 25th, 1915, Jacker was involved in the landings at Gallipoli, arriving at Anzac Cove. Similar scenes can be experienced in Battlefield 1 on the map Cape Hells as you storm the beaches of the Gallipoli Peninsula with the Allied powers or defend the Ottoman Empire's fortifications, master the land, air and sea to win the defining battles. The battle that followed that was just the start of an eight month campaign that claimed the lives of over 8,000 young Australians. Jacker was awarded his Victoria Cross for his actions at Courtney's Post where a few of the 14th Battalion a group that was already in poor shape, had been sent to support Anzacs under the relentless attack from the Turkish. At 3.30am on May the 19th, 1915, a party of Turks threw eight bombs into the trench occupied by Jacker and his comrades. Three men were killed, the rest, except Jacker, were injured. The Turks then jumped into the trench and most of the remaining Australians fled. Jacker, though, kept up a relentless fire on the enemy and thereby prevented their advance. Jacker agreed to launch a counterattack and told the three young privates to fix bayonets and then added, I'll go first, follow me. After a failed initiative in which one of his men was shot, Jacker asked another volunteer to keep up a steady fire while he went along several trenches, crossed no man's land and then ambushed the Turks from the rear. Jacker shot five Turks and bayoneted two others and took three more prisoner. As the smoke cleared, Jacker was approached by a clearly awed Lieutenant Keith Crabbe his first officer. His Victoria Cross was announced in July 1915, making him, at 22 years old, the first Australian of the conflict to receive the award. It also entitled him to £500, which was a formidable sum at the time, and a gold watch offered by a Melbourne businessman to the first compatriot to be awarded the Victoria Cross. Over the next three years, his bravery on the battlefields of France and Belgium would inspire others to enlist and led to a 1,000 strong battalion calling themselves Jacker's mob. Despite all of this, his men adoring him, his Victoria Cross and his clear bravery displayed in the field, he did not have the full respect of the military leaders. This was down to his refusal of orders in situations where he felt his comrades were being put at significant risk for no meaningful gain. During the Somme Offensive on August 7th, 1916, Jacker displayed, once again, quite exceptional bravery. There was a point where only seven Australians were uninjured. Even Jacker has sustained wounds, but even so, he convinced his men to fight back against the Germans. Asking his men to fix their bayonets, he said, let's go for them. The seven fit men and Jacker pushed the Germans, whilst he was said to cry, charge the bastards. Jacker was wounded even further during the melee, but support arrived in the nick of time to assist and eventually kill or capture the remaining Germans. Jacker was wounded seven times in that fight, with one being a bullet wound that passed straight through his shoulder. Of those seven men that charged with him, only three returned alive. Even after this show of bravery from him and his men, senior officers refused to recommend a second gallantry award. His gallantry on the Western Front earned Jacker two more decorations, including the Military Cross. However, many war historians believe Jacker's actions in France should have won him two more VCs, 
in addition to the one he received earlier at Gallipoli. Jacker could be terrifyingly aggressive when his blood was up. Charles Bean, Australia's official war historian, said Jacka should have come out of the war as the most decorated man in the AIF. Everyone who knows the facts knows that Jacka earned the Victoria Cross three times. Jacka quickly became famous. His likeness was used on recruiting posters and his exploits featured regularly in newspapers, particularly in his native Victoria. He began a rapid rise through the ranks, finally becoming a captain in March 1917. The fact he rose no higher has been attributed to his frequent disputes with superior officers. This of course goes hand in hand with the fact that he didn't receive more Victoria Crosses. Jacka returned to Australia in September 1919. He was greeted by a large crowd upon his return and described in one newspaper as the symbol of the spirit of the Anzacs. After being demobilised in January 1920, he went into business with two former members of his battalion. He married the following year and he and his wife later adopted a daughter. Jacka passed away in 1932. His pallbearers consisted of eight other Victoria Cross recipients and an estimated 6,000 witnesses were passed en route to the cemetery. This man was adored. He was a war hero and although he did receive several awards, including the Victoria Cross, it could be said that he was undervalued and should have received far more. It would have been quite cool if DICE had incorporated some war heroes like Jacka into Battlefield 1. I think it would have been really nice to see some link to individuals like him, although this is not to say they won't do it in the future. I feel like it's an opportunity to inform players on this sort of history. If you do want to read more into this, because I've only scratched the surface really with this story, you can check out some more information down in the description. I've linked many articles, some of which I used to create this story. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and let me know if there's anything you want me to focus on in the next War Stories video. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and are looking forward to the new year. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode.